next you know we're going to be charged an annual membership fee to come to church. I wonder what the Lord thinks of all this money grubbing. Whatever you put into something is what you're going to get out of something. Yeah. What anybody that wants to grow realizes it takes investment. But there is a way to be both imperfect and happy. Yes. Our happiness cannot be dependent on our perfection. Well, hello and welcome to the Think Like a Champion podcast. Um, I am not Gregory Dickow. Uh, my name is Rob Dickow, but I'm here with my dad, Gregory yeah. Dickow. Awesome. Dad, how are you feeling? Welcome. I feel great. Thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. for joining me on our podcast, Think Like a Champion. You are a champion. I've been Thank telling you. you that all your life. It's and I'm, I've been feeling it all my life because you're in my life. It makes me feel like a champion just knowing you. Wow. So That's amazing. Who well, we surround you. ourselves with too, right? Yeah. It's just... Uh, Thank God for the opportunity that we have to, to encourage one another and to inspire one another and to build off of each other. That's how yeah. champions, that's what champions do. It's true. And it's been a minute since we've had a conversation like this. I really wanted to get on the podcast with you because I have some things I want to ask you about, some things that are coming up for us yeah. um, as a church and team. Um, I do want to do a quick mention, though, for everyone that's watching or listening Make sure you subscribe to the Gregory Dickow podcast, uh, the Gregory Dickow YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube or Apple or Spotify, make sure you hit subscribe. And we love hearing people comment, which is what we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> yes. We love most people who comment. No, yeah. we love everyone. Yeah. But comment um, something that you're getting out of. Think like a champion. Rate, review. Uh, it helps get the word out to more people. So um, let's dive in. Yeah. I let's had uh, an interaction, we'll call it. And experience and engagement with someone over the comments uh, recently for a video. Now, we let's talk first, before we get into that, let's talk about uh, conference. Yeah. Because for those that don't know, we have a conference coming up at Life Changers Church. So we are about a little less than two months, maybe six weeks out. Right. So Life Changers Conference, it's happening October 4th and 5th. So if you are in the Chicagoland area or you want to make a trip, out of it, come join us. So we're doing Friday night, mm -hmm. Saturday, October 4th and 5th. It's going to be two days right. at Life Changers at our Hoffman Estates campus, which is our central location in the suburbs of Chicago. So that's going to be an amazing experience. Um, it and really is. The theme of our conference yeah. is what you see behind me is happy, imperfect people. We call it HIP. It stands for happy, imperfect people, that there is a way to be both imperfect and happy. So, so often we, we try so hard to be perfect before mm -hmm. we can be happier, to have everything perfect for us, to have everybody treat us a certain way so that we can be happy. Our happiness can never be dependent on our holiness. Our happiness cannot be dependent on our perfection. Um, we're all growing, we're all in a process. God yeah. is working on all of us at different levels in our lives. And it's a, it's, a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. It's not a 440 relay, a 400, 800. It's a marathon, it is a life journey. And that means that we have to give room for growth and give yeah. room for mistakes and give, give ourselves room to fail and get back up and to try things that, we, that, that put us out there at risk. And, um, but, it, but it's also a calculated risk, like we have to determine I'm going to take some risks so I can grow. I'm going to take some risks so I can help people. I'm going to take some risks so I can empower myself and others to, to, to be the best that God created them to be, to, to be the best version of ourselves. So yeah. happy, imperfect people is really the theme of our Life Changers Conference. And we, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's for learning how to lead, uh, lead yourself, lead others, lead leaders. It's to learn how to draw closer yeah. to God. It's an opportunity for us to, to lean in. Everybody's leaning in one direction or another. They're leaning out of what they're in or they're leaning in further to what they're in. And I believe God's called us to lean in. Do not, it says, do not trust, um, trust in the Lord in, in all your ways. Acknowledge him. He'll make, make your path straight. It says, do not lean on your own understanding, right? Do right. You, so yeah. we got to lean into God. We got to lean into our relationship with him. And that's what this we're leaning into worship. We're leaning in to mm -hmm. prophesy. We're leaning in to lead. 
we're leaning in. Yeah. It, so, it is going to be a, a, a jam packed weekend. We're doing Friday night and then all day Saturday. Um, and these are going to be, there's going to be worship sessions. There's going to be times of preaching. There's going to be times of like teaching, like you mentioned prophecy even, which is something that we don't really get into a lot on a Sunday, uh, Sunday morning at church. We, we sometimes do, but it doesn't really always happen. And so it'd be cool to kind of dedicate some time to that. Um, but really the, the, the content is centered around like what you just described is like leadership but leading through that theme of happy and perfect people something you've been preaching about and teaching about on this podcast especially yeah when it comes to leading and knowing how to think like a champion how to renew your mind how to think healthy um you know how to help move towards emotional and mental health it really is grace centered you know and so anyway i i love that you're spending you're gonna spend more time and we're gonna spend more time bringing people in around this yeah now uh, for the controversy of this conference, uh, we'll <laughs> or use any that conference, word. yeah, yeah. Um, it's a paid event, so we it, there is paid registration to attend, um, and it's not expensive. I mean, it's seventy nine dollars is the is the paid registration to to be uh, a part of the conference for that weekend, um, and that's what has kind of sparked a little bit of like, I don't want to say like backlash because most people I think get it and they're on board and realize that yeah there's this is an investment that we're making in ourselves like anyone that wants to come to this conference is they're putting something down they're putting like investment into their leadership into their development yeah Um, and that's what we that's what anybody that wants to grow realizes it takes investment so this is not like uh and i think maybe where the misconception is is this is not a church service like Mm -hmm. a sunday morning and that is we're never going to charge for that but um but even even in a church service i I think the you know the first of all i think that whatever you put into something is what you're going to get out of something yeah we reap we reap what we sow if we sow bountifully we'll reap bountifully if we sow sparingly we'll reap sparingly i think even when people join a church if they're not making a a legitimate real effort to contribute to the church then they're going to get it's not that the church needs or demands something from the person, but a person needs to place a value on their relationship with God and place a value on their relationship with their community and and make investments in in those things and make a contribution. If you if you really love something, you're going to you're going to be generous towards that. If you love growth, if you love to grow, you're going to invest in your growth. Nobody expects to use the facilities of a gym and have all the benefits of using that gym and not paying a fee like every otherwise just work out at home right yeah. otherwise just work out and make you create your own gym but the church is a dynamic organism right it's the body of christ and we give we tithe we offer we serve we 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 voluntarily get involved that is the that the the blessing comes to us Mm-hmm. For, for being generous. The blessing comes to each person for being generous. Uh, what does the scripture say? I think generosity is really a, a greater um, uh, description of what we're trying to do. We're trying to give people the tools to win, the tools to overcome the, the victimization of our lives, how Satan wants us to always feel like we're victims, like we're behind, like we're un, like we like we're less than. God wants us to feel all the good, and, and know that we're doing something good with our lives. I know it's getting a little off yeah. track here, but back to the the whole concept of a fee at a conference is something that everybody accepts in every other venue, mm-hmm. but somehow in a church setting, they they think well it should be free everything should be free salvation is free but it yeah. costs us a lot to get the message out right coming to church is free but it costs us a lot to get the message out and to take care of people spiritually yeah and if i can say i don't I'm, yeah i want to hear anything else you want to share on that but also you mentioned generosity and i think that what's like actually happening is i think you're being generous by not charging more for this kind of <laughs> right. experience because you're going to be like delivering leadership insight and like d- leadership direction that's going to equip people that come to this experience and in a non-church setting people would be paying thousands of dollars to hear the kind of advice and from your experience the things that you've been through as a leader the teams that you've built the buildings you've built the things that you've been a part of in your life the things that you're doing that nobody even is really aware of uh, behind the scenes 
the, that's so valuable. And so for, you know, the cost of, a, you know, a couple entrees at Chili's, <laughs> you know, like yeah. people are going to get so much out of it. And they are. so I think that's really important to, to notate is I think you're being generous. Thank um, you for saying that. I, yeah. I, I also think that, you know, it's important. Yeah. You know, I, when I, when, when I go to speak in places, when people invite me to speak in their venues, they do pay and I don't require anything, but people do give and people do pay. And, and, um, and I'm blessed to be able to, you know, to be what people are trying to do now. Everybody's trying to be an influencer, right? Mm -hmm. But you can be an influencer without trying to be an influencer by just investing in your life and becoming the best that you can be. Yeah. So yeah, people place value on that and I'm happy to give it for free. And I have like been a pastor for 30 years and a minister for 35 years or more. And yeah, I do have some things that I think will really help people. Yeah. And I think if we can take advantage of opportunities like this that are given to us, mm -hmm. like I'm going to be there the whole time, just pouring, pouring, yep. pouring, pouring yep. into everybody that comes. Mm -hmm. And I just want to really encourage uh, the people that are watching that this is an opportunity for your personal growth, yeah, huge. for your emotional well-being, for your spiritual growth, for your growth in, uh, in relationships and getting with people that can, I wear iron can sharpen iron just as one man sharpens another, as the Bible says. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about a comment that came through about <laughs> the conference. All right. Um, and it's since been hidden um, because we actually didn't want comments on this video anyway. It was a, it was a, it's not even a public video. It was like an unlisted video anyway. So this person, it, you were explaining, Hey, here's what you need to know about conference. Here's when it is, here was what it is. Here's what we're doing. So here's a comment that came through. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to say who, who it was from. I don't even have their name, but, um, but I'll, I'll read a, maybe a couple lines of it at least. And it says, uh, I do not pay to come to church. I answered the call of God every day to the best of my ability. How ridiculous to exclude those that don't want to pay to come to church and then act like we don't want to come close to God because we don't want to pay some ridiculous fee to come to church. What happened to my church, I'll never know. So apparently this person used to come here. Next, you know, we're going to be charged an annual membership fee to come to church. I wonder what the Lord thinks of all this money grubbing. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I, when I first saw that, I got to admit, I was pretty heated. Uh, <laughs> I felt like, yeah, this is ridiculous, but I, you know, took a beat. I didn't respond right away. Ultimately I did respond, but I think with kindness and kindly explained the difference between this conference and church and how, you know, try to do my best to that. Um, but what, what do you think about that kind of, comment. I'm not trying to sh like call this person out. Right. I just, this kind of stuff happens a lot where people will get very critical in the comments. People seem to have like a lot of boldness. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a couple of things here. There's like how you handle when you disagree with something. Yeah. But then also like just that, that view. And I think it's important. Everything we just talked about kind of explained the difference between this conference and church and why, right. why it's, there's a, there's a fee to it and we're not charging people and this isn't money grubbing. Yeah. So anyway, well, yeah, it's certainly not because we're not going to make anything from it. And we're, yeah. we're providing first class facilities and first class service that, um, that is worth far more than what anybody could pay. But I think the, I feel, I feel sad and I feel sorry for a person that, that reacts like that and responds like that, because that's clearly a, a trauma based reaction sure. from some other negative experiences that this person most likely has had. And this becomes this invitation to come closer and this invitation to go deeper and, and want to go higher um, is becomes like the thing that this person piggybacks on their criticism that they already feel about churches and they already feel that church is a place right. that people take advantage of others. And really yeah. it's, you know, you either are adding value to others or you're taking advantage of others. And I think that if every human being mm -hmm. would, would just look at life like that, we're either adding value to, to, to others or we're taking advantage of others. And it's easy to, it's easy, it's really easy to detect 
if an organization is trying to take advantage of you or if an organization is trying to place value and, and add value to your life. So we're either adding value or we're taking advantage. I've chosen in my life to add value to people. The only people that, that go negative on this kind, of, uh, this kind of invitation are people that think they're being taken advantage of. And when somebody has a critique like that person, I can't believe church is charging people to come closer to God and then, and then condemning us for that by not paying, we're, we want to stay distant from God. Right, which is, couldn't be further from the truth. It couldn't be further from the truth because, first of all, if you're, if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you, you are already as close as you'll ever be to God. You, he lives inside of you. He's right next to you. He's waiting for you in heaven. There's n nothing you can pay for to get any closer to God. Jesus paid the price for us to get closer to God through his blood gives us total access to God. We're making God, we're making people understand God is so accessible, more accessible than ever. And we do that for free. When we start developing people in their character and in their business and in their, in their leadership qualities, that, that does come. We should invite people to contribute something towards that or pay a fee for that because that's, that's not the same as coming to church. Right. Come to church for free. Go to church anywhere for free. As a pastor, I don't think anybody should even go to church for free. I think freely we receive, we mm. should freely give. There should, be, there should be a giving on both sides yeah. for anything to be positive, for anything to grow, for anything to be healthy. It should be generosity on both sides, on both parties, whether it's marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's church, whatever it is, it, it, it involves and it, and it takes interaction and mutual generosity between the parties. I think that's brilliant. I think you're bringing up a great point that um, we're kind of having the wrong, we're asking the wrong questions if we're asking, is this free or is this not free? <laughs> right. You know, we're our, like what you're describing is just kind of a, you know, a heart of like gratitude, which f overflows with generosity. Absolutely. Like if we're actually grateful for what, what is being, what we're receiving. Like you said, I think that's a brilliant perspective. And if people can just be, I think that anybody can be, can, can give critique if I think critique needs to be um, combined with humility. Mm. In fact, mm. everything needs to be combined with humility, whether it's feedback, whether it's critique, whether it's you know, giving somebody direction. If, you, if they work for you or you serve under them in the military, in business, in a church, in family, in, any, in anything, there's, there's some measure of rank in any, in, in any institution. There, and leader, leadership is lacking in our world today. People that are in charge of things, there's enough people in charge of things, but there's not enough leader, real true leaders, mm. servant leaders, mm. leaders who are wanting to add value to the people that they're leading. So I think, again, that's easy to detect if a person's humble. And I think humility mm. is the side dish that, that should go with everything. You know, some people like ketchup with everything. Some people like, salt with everything some people right some people like sugar with everything uh this humility needs to go with everything like yeah. what in whatever we do be humble and if we have a critique like this guy or this girl saying i don't that i how dare a church require a payment to come to a conference and i would say we're glad that you that you expressed your critique and the better approach to a critique like that is to say, I see what you're doing and I want to draw closer. Is there any scholarships available? Is there any help available that could be made? I'm not, I'm not doing well financially right now and I would love to come to this conference. It seems like it could really add value to my life. Like if somebody approached it like that, mm -hmm. then that's a totally different uh, conversation. But if they approach it as cr just criticize and, and and take all the pain that they've had in their church life and, and pour it out on one thing that really was just a trigger mm -hmm. to so much yeah. that was underneath the surface. People need to heal from their trauma, mm -hmm. Rob. That's to me yeah. what 
Um, what, what one of my God-given assignments is to help people heal from trauma, help people understand how to break down the trauma that they've experienced in their lives and how to notice when they're reacting from a place of trauma and then how to heal trauma. In fact, last two or three yep. podcasts that we've done, Think Like a Champion, are all about healing from stress and healing, being delivered and freed from stress and, and healed from post-traumatic stress disorder. This yep. is a huge problem and it's underneath the surface and it's going to erupt in moments like that from a person like that. And instead I would say, hey, let's let's get you healed of this trauma because clearly that's what that's what's manifesting here and god does want us to be healed there is jesus it was jesus idea to heal people of trauma it says in luke chapter 4 he said god has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted that word brokenhearted comes from the word traumatized heart it's rooted in this word traumatized so jesus is saying hey look i get it you're traumatized in your heart and i'm here to heal it mm. and so our church is committed to um, helping people heal trauma and other things too. And this podcast is dedicated to helping people heal trauma and be the champion God created you to be. And this conference is going to be a place where trauma is right. healed and right. in an even a deeper way. And we're going to just lead people through a process of concentrated, um, concentrated worship, concentrated prophetic anointing, concentrated care for one another, concentrated investment into people's lives. And that's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's more than money can buy. Absolutely. One of the questions I was going to ask you, which you basically just answered was like, how to respond, how should we respond when we encounter situations like this, comments like this, because it's not a rare thing. Like it's common for people to, you know, give criticism through social media. So, but what you're laying out, I think is really brilliant on you basically just being empathetic and understanding that this something going on deeper yeah. in this person's life though so that that's is it. that's right what i should have done immediately <laughs> no, but it's funny learning we all we all are learning we've all been caught off guard with certain comments um somebody commented to me about our conference was i i think maybe i'm just i'm gonna probably find out if i'm if i'm a fool to if I pay for this money, if I pay this registration fee, um, I'm probably gonna, I might I might prove that I'm a fool. And I said, you know, we're fools for Christ. And, there, you know, if you if you do yeah. something, if you first of all, we're talking about what, seventy nine dollars. Like if a person is having a battle emotionally and and verbally, social medially, if they're having a battle with us over. $79, hey, we'd rather just say to you, well, you know what, I'll pay your $79. Yeah. And then will you be as bold to talk about how great this conference is Probably as you not. are? Probably not. <laughs> as you are bold in talking about what yeah. you cr criticize? Right. Like, I would well, rather just help, help a person. I'm yeah. not saying you did anything wrong. I'm saying, no. In generally speaking, I think when people have these negative comments and reactions on social media, they it is simply a trigger. They're being triggered and they're looking for an opportunity to express their pain. Yeah. And I do believe God created us to to be able to express our pain. We just have to express it in the right direction and with the right tone. And if you can't even control the direction that you send your pain in, then you got to get immediate help from a psychiatrist or a, a doctor, a therapist, a, a, a minister, a pastor, like get help. Yeah. Yeah. I think cause that's such a, a pervasive problem in social media is as soon as I disagree, I need to let them know that I disagree or I have a problem with this or, and it almost just feels like such a waste of time because I don't think anyone really is ever convinced by a comment, you right. know, like a, 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 a a critical comment on Instagram or TikTok. I don't know if that really convinces anyone. So I just feel like, so ha maybe that's a question that you can answer is what if, if, you, if I disagree with someone, if I do have like a, a, a criticism of something, like what do I, you kind of said that directed in the right place. So I guess that's, that's something that I think is important for us to know is like, how do we deal with disagreements? And cause I think it's just, it's, I think the foolishness to this person's comment is actually like trying to engage and like try to convince people yeah. that they should think differently. Yeah, and that is so prevalent in social media that people are, social media has become a platform for free, free expression of, 
of any and all feelings that you have inside. And spewing negativity is so, is so common in social media, but it, it does reveal, it's a symptom. It's not the, it's not the problem. The problem is not their negative comments. That the negative comment is a symptom of a deep underlying traumatic condition of their soul that they have not given attention to and they have not gone to the right place to deal with that trauma and to heal that trauma. It's not just somebody that's been in war. Trauma is not just somebody that's been abused. Uh, trauma is in every human being because we do have things that jar us, whether we were in an accident or whether we, we saw a loved one die in a terrible way. These are traumatic things that people experience and they don't know how to process them. I believe that God has laid out for people a, pro a path in which they can process their pain, a path in which they can process what's truly ailing them. And it starts with when Jesus said to the demoniac with a legion of demons in him, what is your name? He, he, he demanded that the, that, the, that the person that was possessed with these demons tell, admit their pain, admit their name, which was admitting their pain. I am legion, the demons said. Mm -hmm. We are many. And um, this man was demon possessed and Jesus said to him, what's your name? Like, I want you to name your pain. If we don't name our pain, we're going to hide it and stuff our pain down and it's going to burst forth and erupt in the wrong way at some point. And that's why I believe that Jesus is the cure to our stress, our trauma, our wounds, our pains. We have to be willing to do the deep work and it starts with naming what it is rather than blaming it we got to be naming it. Name it, don't blame it. You can't tame it if you blame it. You can't, you can only tame it if you name it. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> so Huge. That's, Huge. A, that's, a, that's what I think when people have negative energy that, 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 they're, that they're spewing, they mm -hmm. need to look in the mirror and say, I got to do something about my life. Yeah. The yeah. other thing I think about having a difference, mm -hmm. when people have a difference of opinion or a different point of view, I, I applaud difference of opinions and different points of view. I think everybody should think for themselves. And I think everybody should, um, should, should walk out their beliefs and ev let their beliefs evolve through a relationship with God and an encounter with God and an yeah. encounter with, with good people that can help each other grow. But I, I love, I celebrate differences. I, for years, have, have, have said whenever there's political Whenever we come into a political season, an election season, yeah. my, my motto is that we should have differences without divisions. And we can have differences without divisions. We can have disagreements and we can have differences without having disharmony and dissent and, and, and despair and negativity. Like differences without divisions is how I embrace um, the various political opinions people have, the various spiritual opinions people have, the various personal, emotional uh, opinions people have, I respect. And I, I like to create a bigger umbrella, where every, a bigger tent where everybody can fit in a tent that allows for differences, but doesn't allow for divisiveness and negative energy shaming others who disagree. I think we should celebrate others that disagree. And if we're dealing with something where somebody disagrees with a, a legitimate reality, like there are certain realities, somebody could go around saying, there is no sunshine, there is no sunshine. Well, that's a reality that you can't argue with. When you argue with reality, you're positioning yourself for a life of insanity mm -hmm. or a life of unhappiness for sure. We have to not argue with reality. But when it comes to differences of opinion or different shades of that reality, is the, is the sun yellow or is it kind of orange or is it a shade of yellow? Is it like, okay, you're gonna see things differently. The, remember what was going, along, going around a few years ago was when one person looked at this image, it looked like a purple dress. And when somebody else looked at the image, it looked like a gold dress. It was looking at, we both were looking at the same thing. And that was a big thing back mm -hmm. a few years ago. And but I think it's a brilliant uh, example that I think is a gift from God to show us that we could be looking at the same thing, but looking at it differently. But we can have differences, a different of, difference of opinion of what color it is, 
without saying, no, that's a pair of overalls or yeah. no, that's really a hat. No, it's not a hat. It's a dress. But if it's, but the question is, is what color is it to you? It's gold to you. It's purple. You're both right. Cause that's how you see it. And neither are wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you say that's a hat, not a dress, well, somebody's right and somebody's wrong on that one. Mm -hmm. Cause it's reality versus unreality. Right. Yeah. And I think what you've been so great about through this podcast is bringing us back to what re our reality is based in as the word of God and scripture. And so I think we all need to have that as our foundation yeah. so that we know how to filter through so many of the differing opinions and thoughts. And, you know, people say how hard it is to communicate in a text. And I really think that's an excuse for people to be, to be mean because they say, Oh, I didn't mean it in that tone. That was, you know, you can't really tell the tone in a yeah, text message, right. but the truth is you can, you know, you, that's a lie. That's a sham. That's a cover up for negativity. And that's a cover up for looking for a fight. That's what people do. Sometimes mm. they're looking for a fight. Mm. They, then they say something that's charged with emotion and charged with passive aggressiveness. And then they, Pass, they aggress, they're aggressive in what they say, and then they're passive in saying, I didn't really intend it in that tone. You're reading into it. No, I'm not. I take great, I take great staking pain, I think is the figure of speech that we use, to, to try to communicate in the right tone. And you can control that. You, you can say, hey, I want you to make sure that you hear the tone of what I'm saying. This is love. This is no pressure. This is... You know, and, and I don't even know that I'm right about what I'm about to say. This is just how I feel right now, but I'm, 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 I'm sure it's subject to change. And I want to hear, I want you to weigh in on it too. Yeah. Like then you can say anything when you're inviting the other person's input and you're inviting the other person to process this with you. Yeah. There are so many ways to communicate effectively and it's lazy to say, oh, you just didn't understand my tone. And that's not what I meant. And you can't really understand a person's tone in a, in a, in a, in a written text. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're getting into communication. Yeah. And I think that's a, a, definitely a conversation that we should talk about at some point and healthy communication and relationships and all that. Uh, I know we've been going for a little bit here. Anything else that's on your mind that before we wrap up? Like, yeah. I, Tell me. I, I think the Bible tells us to take responsibility for ourselves. When a man said, I can't get in that pool to get healed because I have nobody to put me in. And Jesus said, you know what? No more excuses. Just walk, get up and mm -hmm. walk. I think people need to, John chapter five, people need to just get up and start walking, start walking in the direction towards your destiny. Where do you want your destination to be? What is your end goal? Where do you want to, where do you want to your life to end? Start there and then just take the next step there. I like to say your calling is found in your conquering. You can't get to the finish line today, but what you can do is you can conquer what's right in front of you. Yeah. And when you conquer what's right in front of you, an attitude, a bill, uh, a responsibility you need to attack, exercise, waking up on time, um, feeding yourself spiritually, taking care of your health emotionally and, and, and spiritually and physically, like, just take the next step. Just conquer what's right in front of you. What is the biggest problem you're dealing with? Credit card debt? Okay, don't try to pay it all off at once. Conquer what's right in front of you. Conquer the thing that is right in front of you. Conquer the biggest bill and attack that and then you'll be able to conquer. Just keep conquering or do it the other way around. It doesn't matter. Just conquer what's right in front of you. I think when people say, I. I want to be a great leader one day, but you're not a great follower. Mm. Conquer being a great follower, yeah. and that'll be one step closer to being a great leader. Mm -hmm. And to end on my, what might come across like um, a little corny, okay. I have okay. a quote that I want to end today's podcast with from Theodore Roosevelt, one of the great presidents uh, in American history. And it's the, it's the arena speech, mm. right? And it's very long, only yeah. we know only, you know, the part that gets publicized, but it's right. a very deep, long um, speech that he gave. But the part that we know and the part that we can relate to and the part I hope people will receive this in, a, in, the, in the spirit in which it's intended to challenge each listener and each viewer to become somebody who engages in winning the battle of your life, winning the battle for your destiny, not winning over people, 
winning over the previous version of you. Mm -hmm. But he said this, it is not the critic who counts, because anybody can criticize. It is not the critic who counts, Teddy Roosevelt said, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Awesome. It's a quote that speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. Get in the arena right. mm -hmm. and start winning yeah. and start leading yourself yeah. and you'll be great. I love what uh, JD, um, my brother, uh, your son, <laughs> he, he, he leads our youth and young adults at Life Changers. And w one of the things he's been saying a lot lately is what's the worst that can happen? The worst that could happen is we grow. And yeah, that's when it good. comes to facing challenges and facing difficult things and stepping into new territory, honestly, that mindset is so empowering just because you know that no matter what on the other end, you are going to be better off yeah. in one way or another, whether it's the way that you thought it was going to look like or not, you are going to be better off. And that's what this conference, Life Changers Conference, I'm believing is going to happen for anyone that is willing to make the investment to show up, to make that time, carve out that time in their schedule, to be there, to lean in, to press in. And like you're talking about the calling that's found in your conquering, I really believe that people's calling is there. It's going to get uh, activated, reactivated. It's going to go to the next level. And so, uh, you know, I think it's in Proverbs, the, um, the purpose of within a man is, is like deep waters, so yeah. something like that's like yes. a deep well. That's where I think this conference is going to draw out the purpose inside of people. So yeah, it's deep calling unto deep. Yeah. And it's like, this is, this is an arena. What we're creating at, this, at Life Changers Conference is we're creating an arena for people to get up and, and invest towards their destiny and get around people who are winning mm -hmm. and who creating a wi winning culture and who are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ and who think like champions. Yep. Come on, get in this arena yep. with us yep. and you're gonna be great. Yeah. Yep. So Life Changers Church, no, lifechangersconference.com. That's where you can register. Lifechangersconference.com. Lifechangersconference.com. And um, so get on it. If uh, if you're in the area, if you're not in the area, make a trip out here. Yeah. Spend. We're also going to be celebrating 31 years of Life Changers Church on that Sunday. So Which there's no registration fee for exactly, that Sunday. Exactly. <laughs> so for but come that willing want to. to receive and come willing to give and watch what God will do in your life. It's going to be a great time. Thank yeah. you for the time today. Thank and, you. Uh, Great conversation. Yeah, Thank, thanks for having it. And for anyone that's listening, watching, hit subscribe. Make sure you stay connected because we're going to keep, you obviously have a weekly podcast, so you're releasing content every single week. And on the YouTube channel, yes, you're come on. putting new content out. We had a, a video on end times, prophecy. Like, yeah. There's some good stuff on there. So Gregory Dickow on YouTube. Dad, thanks so much for all you're doing to lead us. And um, Thank you, super Chan. excited for what's, what's ahead. Me too. Me too. Love All you right. guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Yeah. Love you. We'll see you soon. All right.